Hey guys, and welcome back to another spore-themed ZBrush speed sculpt video. As I've been doing a fair little bit recently, I've imported another spore creation into ZBrush with the overall goal of just making it bigger, better, brighter, more colourful, more detail, just uh, really take the spore creation to the next level. And for this one, I've decided to use a very old creation called a Kyloodo? I'm just going to call it Kyle. I think it was like a randomly generated name, so I've got no idea how I even pronounce it. The original creation itself was made back in about December 2008, so it's really quite an old creation. I'd say about, uh, what, like nearly 11, 12 years old now? And I recreated said creation again in 2016. I gotta say, it was, <laughs> I thought it was much more sooner than that, how time flies. So I made it again in 2016, and in my rec um, in my updated version, I wanted to try and just overall not quite remake the creation, but just like really remaster it. Since when it comes to a lot of my reborn creations, or the ones that I kind of remake afterwards and remaster, I normally try to just emphasize all the existing features, but in the case of the Ky Kyle Odo, or Kyle, it looked extremely generic in the original design. So in the new version, I took the color scheme, which was black with dark red and dark blue. I emphasized that, I turned it into a red and blue creation with a bit of cyan, and overall just turned it into more of a dragon and less of the whatever scrawny thing it was before. And so, with this creation, I was really excited to put this one to Dead Brush because, like I said, it's got this really bright, this very bright and vivid color scheme. Lots of blue, lots of red, and a bit of cyan. And that's going to really make it pop. Not to mention the usual kind of like white and beige and brown that Spore normally has. In particularly around like the feet, the um, mouth, the frills, and the horns and such. So, it's got like a lot of color potential, and therefore, I was really excited to try this one. So, ZBrush. <laughs> the actual process of getting it into ZBrush. Like I said, I tend to follow a Blender specified tutorial. Again, it will be in the video description down below. It works for ZBrush, it works for Sculpturous. That's how I get my spore creations into ZBrush, and I gotta say it's really, really convenient. Now, when I got the creation to ZBrush, my first protocol here was to detach all of the harder surfaces, like the horns, the teeth, the um, claws, or in this case, kind of like hooves. Like, just like very large, primitive claws. Like, if you played sport, you'll know exactly the ones I'm referring to. Now, I will admit, much, much thanks to you guys in the comment section of the last previous sport ZBrush video, there I have actually been informed of a trick as to how I can automatically detach all these spikes and such. I did not know that as of recording this, but thank you very, very much for informing me so you will be seeing that in the future but until then i have just been manually masking out all the pieces i wanted to have separated uh, when i masked them all out and then separated them or using split mask option made their own little sub tool or sub or layer for those who are not really that familiar and then that way i can then give them a different material different color it'll be much more bold much more um, better defined and it'll allow me to really go crazy on the base creature itself so as always, the first thing I did then was start off with the mouth. There was again just an open mouth because of the way that Spore exports uh, things like heads. It tends to open them a little bit into their little T-pose stance. That's how to go with it. I will admit I got a little bit cheeky when doing the teeth uh, because it's the same head structure. Like it literally is the same Spore heads as the Horned Raptor we did before this one. I may have just uh, exported the teeth, <laughs> basically just copy pasted it along, which is a little bit cheeky, I don't normally do that, but it's my own little silly sculpt, so this is all just for fun, it's not like it's a commission or a request or anything, so I gave myself a little bit of leeway on that one. So when it came to doing things like the eyes, the eyes are interesting because in Spore, so when it comes to spore creation, I really like those really large, um, kind of rocky eyes that, that things like the Saurian and something else. I really like those really, really large ones. But in a ZBrush sculpt where I've got a lot more control over the shape and in particular the colour, not really that big of a fan of it in the end. So in the end, I kind of just turn the eyes into like a bit of a... Really like a car carnotaur, like some other kind of theropod, just very large ridges along the eyes. Kind of trying to make it a bit more dinosaur-like and less, you know, spore-like. And also when it came to the frills, so the frills, 
<laughs> that was a, kind of funny to notice actually. So it turns out I used frills a lot when I was younger. It wasn't just a Jowie, it was a lot of other creations as well. So that was another point that I tried to make the frills in this one just a little bit less Jowie-like. It wasn't really a focus, I mean it's not something I want to focus too much on or obsess over, but it would be nice to have the, uh, to have the model differentiated between or differentiated from the Jowie because when I was live streaming this a lot of people did mention, oh it's a dragon Jowie. No, it didn't mean to be, but fortunately the colour scheme will really emphasise that later. So anyway, technical background aside, when it came to the actual body itself, so of course I spent a lot of time refining the body, just making a lot of the anatomy make a bit more sense, since again, Spore has like his very bulbous limbs, everything's like kind of very round, very cartoonish. So I did go back and forth and basically just adjust a lot of the limbs, make them a bit sharper, a bit more narrower, a bit more, mus uh, a bit more muscular. I did also try to add in as many original features from the creation itself. For example, a couple of the bone knee pad pieces are on the forelimbs, the hind limbs, and around the chest. Uh, when it comes to the chest, it was kind of strange, and you'll see that towards the end. I really just did not know what to do with it because it was really strange having these big pink armor plating on the chest because there's really no sense for it in the way it was done. But again, though, it's meant to be based on the creation. I wanted to stay true to it, stay relaxed, stay true. And so I did just like kind of add in some markings, like just some very large, almost um, like osteoderm kind of like markings, but admittedly <laughs> not very, very good. And then once I was happy with the body, it was just a case of needing up other features like the big spikes going down the spine. I had to make them a little bit thicker so that one, they just look better and looked, you know, a bit less uh, plasticky. But also too, because in ZBrush, if you have a mesh that's really thin, it does tend to distort and it also makes it a lot harder to colour it in when using poly paint. So like I said, wanted to make it all a little bit thicker around the spikes, especially when I transition into the base of the creature. That way it looks like they've grown from the creature and haven't been glued onto it. The wings, on the other hand, the wings, I mean, the spore did, to be honest, like as far as a lot of the pieces and spore goes, all the various parts and such, the webbed wings are honestly fantastic and didn't really need much um, changing on that. If anything, I could make the webbing of the wings actually fall down to around the hips and just have like the overall webbing, like the surface area a lot larger. I definitely could have done that, didn't think about it at the time. I might do it for future creations actually. But otherwise, with the general gist of the sculpture itself pretty much sculpted, I then dived into the colours and that was where this creation was really going to shine. That being said though, I actually did struggle with the colours in some places. So like I mentioned, this was meant to be like a bit of a relaxed sculpt. So I was really trying to think of things very loosely, very, very, you know, like very casually and such. But I was also live streaming this and while live streaming it, I did get a little bit stuck on the face because like I mentioned earlier, the eyes have this really weird, like large armor to it. And I wasn't really sure how to color that in. So like I said, I was live streaming and Draculady, who I'm sure many of you have probably heard of by now, she had a really, really cool technique in mind for how to do the, um, how to do the face in general. And that's where we got the idea of adding white into it because in the original creation, the only bit of white was around the frills and the claws and that was about it really. Whereas what Draki had the idea of was anywhere that there was cyan would transition into a white and overall just really make the colour scheme kind of pop out significantly more. Which I have to say was an absolutely massive help. We did then also try to apply that same technique of adding the white into some other areas as well. Like I said, into just generally more of the cyan rich areas, so the hands and feet, a bit of the wings, a bit of the underbelly. That way it wasn't secluded to the face, it would make the face... The face would still stand out very strong, but it wouldn't be really eye like it wouldn't be that terribly eye catching. Now, when it came to the rest of the creation in terms of color scheme, like I said, due to it being a small creation, there was a fair amount of pink and beige. So I really did try my best to bleed that in wherever I can. Uh, some areas, like the red of the spikes, in my opinion, came out wonderfully well. It kind of reminds me of Stegosaurus spikes in a way, and I really, really like it. And I think it's like just such a nice clean gradient compared to the blue and it just contrasts really nicely but then again with the pink i tried to add the pink in various other places like the armor plating on the chest i mentioned earlier again did look kind of strange but i kind of just stuck with it in the end and also on the frills themselves give it like a bit of a fleshy appearance so that was overall the initial intention to try and keep it as close to the original creation as possible but as it progressed onwards and certain things just started feeling just really weird for example the pink on the uh, armored hands and feet i just didn't like him i really really did not like them it just felt strange 
So because due to the patterning on the spore creation, they kind of look like two little circles in a way, I decided to just ditch the big pink armored texture and just elect for, you know, these big red circles instead. That way, again, just hopefully it was a bit more consistent with the rest of the creature because it, the feet just looked odd. And speaking of red circles, I also ended up adding that to the frills. Because again, the frills, they have like these big red stripes that transition to cyan uh, tips on the frills. And I was having a very hard time trying to convey that in such a way that wasn't really jarring. And I just couldn't. So eventually the chat then recommended how about I add spots into the frills. Just something very, very subtle, very clean, very tidy, and I quite like it. It's different compared to the rest of the creation. And as a lot of you know, I really like trying to get consistent designs. So the frills did stand out, in my opinion, a bit too much. But it was just enough. Maybe a little bit stronger than I would have liked, but just enough. Where it still made it seem overall just original. I think if I added any more markings, aside from what I currently have, the three little dots and the red tips, I think if I added... Sorry about that. <laughs> I think if I added any more than that, then that would have uh, been a bit too much. But right now, I think we've struck a really nice balance. And then next up were the eye colour. So again, on the creation, the eye colour is just a very large white eyes with uh, green irises and black uh, circular pupils. And... I honestly just didn't want to do it, it just felt really out of place just to add in like these green eyes or green and white eyes onto this um, very colourful creature. So instead of green, I actually elected to use like a bit of an orangey, yellowy, golden colour, which I have to admit is also just as out of place, having like a yellow or orange eyes is very, very piercing, but it felt a bit more neutral, I guess maybe because of the primary colours since red, blue and yellow are all primaries, whereas green just would have felt, yeah, it just would have felt a bit too out of place, but yellow I think was like a nice kind of piercing, somewhat in place. <laughs> and then I made the pupil itself just a very large black circle, which admittedly was a little bit lazy, but it also gave the creature a fairly cute expression. In the small creation, it looks quite angry, but that is just simply due to the eye, the eyes used. They are like the very large armored ones that tend to make things look very grumpy. I wasn't really aiming for that with this, so just by adding in the large black pupil, it just immediately changed the expression, made the creature look more curious, more welcoming, just overall a lot cuter, and in a sense, a bit more spore like because of it. I make so many angry creations and models, I like to make a bit cuter for now and then, and I think it fitted it really, really well. And then with the colours all done, just like I did with the Horned Raptor, I then went on to do the scales. I normally do the scales before texturing because I tend to find that adding uh, those kind of details are very distracting before or uh, after colouring. But it's just the method I did with the previous, um, it's the method I did with the first Spore model. So I wanted to keep it consistent to that, that way I can get like the same overall feel and finish. So after covering it with a great big layer of uh, lots and lots of small little scales, along with a bit of uh, folds and wrinkles here and there, and the model is complete. And I have to say, I really, really like it. Considering that these are just meant to be silly little fun exercises of doing spore creations in ZBrush, I think it looks really cool, man. I'm, I'm really happy about it. It looks so much bolder and just so much better than the original creation, but it's still very reminiscent as well, though. And I gotta say, like, just as a concept, I actually really like the design and how it came out. And I think Jackie's suggestions in regards to how to colour in the feet and the face, they just helped so much. Really made it pop out ever more. And it, was, and it was all the finishing touches that this required. So like I said earlier everyone, if you want to figure out how to get your own small creations into ZBrush or into your own 3D model editor, 3D program of choice, <laughs> the tutorial will be in the video description down below. And otherwise, I'll see you guys very soon with another sports sculpt. I've been doing quite a few of these and I've been really excited to show you. So I'll see you guys very, very soon. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and thank you very much.